Hey guys, Alex here from Homeschool of Bel Air. I wanted to give you guys a quick little update as to how I set up all of my teaching guides, teaching manuals, and just teaching resources for this coming school year. Stay tuned. Okay, so this little rack here that I have on my desk, this is where I kept all of my teaching guides and teaching manuals. And what I was noticing that was happening was that I would misplace them. I would stuff them in. They would get bent up because of this rack. The way that it's um, set up, there's nothing really holding it in the center. So it's this bar and then this bar. Some of my teacher manuals were getting kind of crinkled in the corners because I wouldn't quite make it to that second rack. So they would just kind of end up like that. It was just kind of aggravating me um, simply because it would just make my desk look super sloppy, really messy. Um, there was times where I would just kind of get annoyed and not even throw them in there. I would just kind of set them on my desk. And then by the end of the week, I would just have this pile of just stuff here on my desk. Um, so I'm just trying to avoid the clutter. My husband does tend to use my computer sometimes for work. So just the fact that he would bring up his stuff and then I had my stuff and it was just a big old mess. So what I decided to do, um, and I'll show you guys real quick what I did with this area so all I really have here now are a few teaching resources and um, like little handbooks for teaching phonics and a few extra little planners that I'm currently not using. Only because this stuff, I, it's not going to get moved around much. This is pretty much going to stay here. Because this stuff I don't really use all the time. It's not going to get moved around as much as like the teacher manuals and things that I'm actually currently using. Um, I do have extra space here for any other things that I might need to keep here. But for now, I think this is fine. All I really kept on my desk is my teaching, my, my planner, my notebook where I make notes, um, or jot, jot down information when I'm on the computer. I have a little, uh, one of these little folders with stickers in it for my planner. And then my little Sudoku puzzle, um, that I kind of just work on whenever I'm bored. <laughs> And then what I did down here is I just had a bunch of junk in these two shelves. So what I ended up doing it doing was getting um, file folders. And I have one with just extra planning pages or for my planner, extra pages for my planner. And then this green one are just things that I just need to laminate. So just things that I haven't gotten to that just need to be laminated. And then this yellow one up here is just stuff that needs to get put away. So any printable or little, um, any little thing that I'm using for the kids that I just simply need to put away. So it has a place for it now. So like that, as soon as I get to it, I can just go ahead and go through this folder and put everything away where it needs to be. These here are just little posters that I made for the first day of school for the kids. I just don't want to lose them. I messed up on the date. I put the 31st instead of the first, um, I just whited it out. Anyway, so these are just little posters that I made for the kids for the first day of school. I just don't want to lose them, so I just kind of put them here for now. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what I ended up doing with all of my teaching guides, teaching manuals, how I set them up, and it's just working out so much better for us. So a couple weeks ago when I was at Michael's, I decided to buy myself this 10-drawer rolling cart. I actually didn't add the wheels to it because I, I do want it to be pretty stationary. Um... And I got it for $30 at Michael's. I don't know. I know they're having some sales now. I'm sure I could have probably gotten it cheaper. But it's okay. $30, I still feel it's not bad. It's actually a really pretty um, cart. So anyways, what I ended up doing, because in our house, we are huge fans of the Workbox system. And I decided to go ahead and set up almost like a mommy Workbox system. So it's pretty much the same idea as you would do for your child and set up all of their... Um, supplies and workbooks and such inside the work boxes only this is the mommy version of it so I have all of my teaching guides and teaching resources inside each drawer labeled by subject so like that if you know say me and my son are doing um, our math I know exactly where to go and get my teacher manual and pull out whatever resources I need that I stick in there for the week that we're gonna be using for whatever lesson we're on so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a more in-depth look into how I set all this up. Okay, so the first, uh, the top two bins, only because I don't have a drawer for these and 
These are things that I don't want inside their work boxes. The first thing I have is my complete daily curriculum for early childhood book. This is something that I'm going to be using quite a bit with my daughter. So I just kind of want it on hand. I just want I just want it close to her preschool stuff. And I'll show you guys where I have all her preschool stuff set up. But this is um, where I, I set it up in one of the little book bins. Next to that, I have the Easy Peasy Learn to Read book. And this is something that I decided to go ahead and introduce to Evelyn. We're doing um, the online, the free online program. Even though we're not doing this book yet, she's only three, but I am starting her on the getting ready level. And we're starting her with day one um, on August 1st. I am, I did decide though to start Adrian on day 172, where you actually take off from this book on lesson one. So if anybody's familiar with that online program, the getting ready uh, level is the preschool program that she has on her website for free. And it goes day by day and it gives you lesson plans and lesson guides as to what you need to teach your child on that day. Um, and on the day 172 is when they introduced this actual book. And this book you actually started on lesson one. So like I said, I'm going to be starting this with Adrian on that day, on the lesson of 172, and then Evelyn's going to start day one. So she's not going to be reading from this book. This is mainly for Adrian. The other thing that I stuck up here is a reading lesson book. Um, and this is the, the reading lesson, Teach Your Child to Read in 20 Easy Lessons. Me and Adrian work very slowly from this book, but we are working through it. Um, the lessons are kind of long for him. Um, so we do maybe just one page a day. I try not to push it too much. His main reading curriculum this year is going to be the All About Reading Level 1. And we're also going to be using the um, Horizons Phonics and Reading along with the read curriculum from the Crafty Classroom. So he's doing a lot of reading programs. Um, I'm trying to map it out so he's not doing everything every single day of the week. So I'm try still trying to map all that stuff out for him. Anyways, the next one is my art bin. The art bin, only because we don't have worksheets or anything like that, so I don't need to keep these inside their work boxes. So I just put the two um, main curriculum art books that we're going to be using for this year. I just stuck them up here along with a little color chart or a color wheel, sorry. And then also um, this book here is from the Harcourt Company and I have a few of them that I purchased through Goodwill and they're just literature books. They just have stories and this is part of our morning time, morning calendar time. We have a story that I read every morning to them. So this is pretty much what I'm reading out of and I'm just kind of going in order reading uh, one story a day, and when we're done with this book, I'll just grab another book and stick it in here. Um, so that's that's all that I have in here. So then going down into the actual work boxes, and I'm probably going to set you guys on a tripod so I'm not moving around so much. So hang tight. Okay, so the first drawer in my mommy work boxes <laughs> is my preschool stuff. So in the preschool stuff, I have pretty much anything that is going to be for Evelyn. And the way that I set it up is I set it up for the month. So for all of the month of August, I have all her things set up. These books are just books that I'm going to be working out of with her and Adrian. Um, we're going to be doing the colors and the shapes together. Obviously, um, Adrian already knows all this stuff. I'm going to be working more with Adrian um, as far as the spelling of the words as opposed to the actual colors and the shapes. And then Evelyn, for the whole month of September or August... We're going to be working, one of the skills that we're going to be focusing on is cutting. So this is what we're going to be using for her cutting skills. Um, and the reason I have these books in here is because we're not going aligned with the way that they're, the colors and shapes are introduced in this book. Um, like for instance, we're not doing the color red first. We're actually doing the color blue first. So this is going to be something where I'm going to have to paper clip the page and give her this page to work on and so forth. So that's the way that I'm working these out and that's why they're in here. Um, the other thing that I have in here is an accordion file folder and inside this accordion file folder, and I hope you guys can see this good, is because of the whole, the whole month of August, we're gonna be working on uh, the first three letters of the alphabet, obviously. So it's gonna be A for week one, week two, week three, and then week four. So it's A, B, C, and D. And then I also have uh, their color, 
I have another little area where I have her color pages that we're going to be focusing on with all her little worksheets for that color and that shape. So all that stuff is set up here for the month. And then along with weekly file folders for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So like that, whatever work I have for, let's say letter A, I'm gonna go ahead and separate this into the full five days a week and stick those in here. So like that for Monday, I know just to grab this, set it up in her little tray work and along with any other little hands-on activity that I might have for her. So this is mainly just the paperwork stuff that we're gonna be working on. Also, um, whatever theme we're working on for that week or for that month. So like all about her, um, all about me stuff. We're gonna be talking about the five senses in the month of August. So all that kind of stuff, I'm just gonna, I just have it set up and ready to go inside this little file folder. So that's what I have inside my preschool bin. So the second bin down is my all about reading and read curriculum uh, workbox. So in here, all I really have is my all about reading level one teacher manual. I also have the read curriculum overview and schedule. And when you print this out, you pretty much just get the, uh, you get the curriculum overview and the little schedule that goes day to day what you're supposed to be introducing. I just pretty much created a little cover with her cover sheet. I took it into PowerPoint and I just added the curriculum overview and I printed out on cardstock and I just kind of spiral bound it. So like that, um, it's almost like my little teacher guide. The problem that I was having with this is that I just had it stapled and I would just set it down everywhere and I would constantly lose this page or these pages. So this actually is working out so much easier for me to have it just in one place and it's, you know, spiral or comb bound. So it's just so much easier. The other thing that I keep in here is a little, one of these little um, like recipe or coupon boxes or uh, accordion files. Um, and all I really have in here are flashcards of the sight words that we're working on for that, for whatever lesson and for all about reading, whatever cards that we're, or word cards that we're focusing on for that lesson that we're doing. So all that kind of stuff is just set up in here. So like that, if I have my lesson with uh, my oldest with all about reading, I just grab the cards and I grab this and we're ready to go. So that's what I have in here. Okay, so the next one is my Singapore math bin. And in this one, I have both the boys in the Singapore math. Adrian just started his Singapore math essentials and there's no teacher guide for that. So the only one I have in here is Vincent's teacher guide. He's um, currently on the 2A. And um, what I have in here is my teacher, teacher manual and the primary, the textbook. So the reason I don't have his primary mathematics textbook inside his drawer, it's because this isn't something that I have him write in. What I do is I go through my instructor guide. I go through the lesson. Obviously, I read whatever we're going to be learning that day. I um, get whatever uh, manipulatives we might need for whatever lesson we're doing. And then from here, we just pretty much do... We work out these problems together. So these are the problems that I work out on the uh, chalkboard or my whiteboard or just a piece of paper. And we work these problems out together. So then usually once we get all these problems, I kind of use them as lessons. So we do these as lessons. And then once um, we get to the workbook exercise, like for instance, this one, once we finish with our lesson, it's going to tell him to do his workbook exercise 15. And that's when he gets his workbook out and he works independently with his workbook. Um, so the only other thing I have in here, for instance, would be any kind of math manipulative that we might need for said lesson. So for instance, on this one, it calls for a, um, for a place value chart and place value chips. At first we were using regular poker chips but the ones that I have, oops, sorry, the ones that I have are just all white. And my son is very visual. He's a very visual learner. So I ended up creating my own PDF of the place value chart. So we have thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. And then I just printed out um, little chips with the same, with the, the little place value chips. Sorry, his ones, his tens, his hundreds, and his, his thousands. So I just kind of have these in here. So whenever we're ready for the math lesson, I just go ahead and grab 
all of these things and take them to his desk and we're ready to go with his lesson for the day. Um, the manipulative will change according to the lesson. Right now, this is just what we're using for now. Last week, we were actually using um, the counting, um, what are they called? The, uh, the base 10 blocks. So that's what it, we were using last week. But this week, we've been using, the, uh, we've been using these. So that's what's going to be in here. So that's what I have in my Singapore math bin. Okay, so in my next drawer down, I have my Horizons Phonics and Reading. So in this one, all I really have is my Horizons Phonics and Reading Teaching Guide, along with a few phonic um, cards. Um, and these, I just have them in here, um, and as I need them, I'll pull them out and use them. So in the next bin is my Handwriting Without Tears. In the Handwriting Without Tears, I have both my teaching guide for um, kindergarten and the one for second grade. And I also have some of these um, word builder uh, pieces. These I printed out and I can't remember where I got them from because there's two different ones that I printed out. Um, this I used with Adrian last year to form letters. They work fine. I bought Evelyn the magnetic ones from Learning Resources and those are actually super cute. But for Adrian, we're just continuing to use these. These are the ones he used last year, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep them on these. Um, so yeah, so I have the word builder uh, pieces and my two teaching guides for handwriting without tears. The next bin down is my spelling curriculum, and we're using the words their way curriculum. We had started with the spelling, the all about spelling program, but I feel like it's just a little too advanced. Some of the words that they were introducing in the beginning were just way harder than what my son, um, where my son was at. Um, with the words their way, it's um, a lot of cutting and pasting, but you're also uh, sorting by word families and sounds. So it's so much easier to introduce spelling to, um, I, I want to say, a younger child. So what I have in here are the teacher guides for kindergarten level and the level A. Um, and me and Vincent started this curriculum kind of late in the school year. So we're still actually working on the guide A or level A, um, even though I do have guide B ready um, for whenever we're complete with this. We're just not done yet with this curriculum, but that's totally fine. Um, so that's what I have in here. The other thing I have in here is um, this other curriculum called work, uh, Making Words, very similar to the All About Spelling in the sense that you're given words or letters. Um, this one, the way they introduce them, they do them in pocket charts and they do uh, flashcards. And uh, you give the kids, for each lesson, they tell you what letters to give the child and what letters they need to start forming or they should be forming. So, for instance, um, warm-up lesson one, you would give your child the letter A, two letter Cs, an H, an R, an S, and a T. And then it pretty much tells you what words. It gives you examples of what words they should be forming with those letters. Um on the back of the book, they also give you some flashcards that you can print out and use. I didn't print any of these out um, or I'm not using those only because I already have some that I had purchased through Teacher Pay Teachers a while back. Um, so this one, we have the consonants in red and then, or I'm sorry, the vowels in red and the consonants in black. And it was a pocket chart. Um, it was a po pocket chart pack that I had purchased, I want to say through Ms. Giraffe on Teacher Pay Teachers. And they come with picture cards, so it's like a, it's almost like a CVC word builder. But this is going to be something that I, um, I've been using with my five-year-old, um, only because we've been only doing um, CVC words for now. But once I start introducing this a little bit more to him, I think we'll start, we'll move into um, what I do with my eldest. So with my eldest, I do the little Rubik's cubes, and these are the phonic ones. So I have all the letters set aside for you know, the warm up lesson one. And then I just have them use these to form the words. Um, another thing I can also use is since I have the board up for the all about reading program, I could also on whatever day if we just feel like it, I can just have them work with the little magnets to form the same words. Um, so yeah, so this is all that I have in here. Oh, and FYI, this is something that I bought through Goodwill. I'm not sure. I haven't looked it up on Amazon or anywhere to see where you can find it. But if anybody's interested, I'll 
let me see. It's called, it's called Making Words by Cunningham and Hall. And um, it's actually a pretty good book. Since what letters you're supposed to introduce and what words they're supposed to be forming. And then you kind of go into harder words. So then, um, let's say, what, I think I have it tabbed out. Yeah, after warm-up lesson 10, you go into the blending letters and they have a little blender so these are the letters that you give your child whether it be on flashcards or magnets or uh, whatever you want to use and these are some of the words that they could actually build with the words given to them um and they're what i like about it is that they're a different level of words so you have words like an at ad dad did aid toad but then you also have words like addition. So depending on the grade level, it depends on the child what word they can, you know, form with the letters given to them. So I'm actually super excited to be starting this. Um, I introduced a little bit of it with the boys and um, they seem to find it pretty fun. So in my little green bin here, we have my Spanish. And in Spanish, I'm using two different uh, sources of curriculum when it comes to teaching the kids. Um, one of the things that I'm using is this DVD. Um, this DVD is called The Foreign Language for Kids by Kids. And it's three, it's a set, it's a set of three DVDs. And um, this is levels one through three. And it's ages three and um, three and plus. So this is what our main curriculum is going to be. We're going to be doing lessons from this DVD. And... Along with this, um, I didn't purchase, I, I believe through the curriculum website, you could actually buy flashcards and I think workbooks to go with this. I'm not doing any of that. Um, if anything, I might end up making my own flashcards just with some of the vocabulary words that they introduce for each lesson. Um, but I haven't decided yet. So for now, like I said, so what I have inside my little work box is a DVD for Spanish. I also purchased a curriculum it's a preschool level curriculum through Teacher Pay Teachers. And it is put on by a, com or a lady. Her website is sparkenthusiasm.com. And she has this curriculum on Teacher Pay Teachers. That's where I got it from. And I want to say it was like 11 or $12. And it's a 21 lesson curriculum. I'll have to make a whole other complete video as to how we're going to be doing Spanish. But I'll go ahead and show you guys how I have this set up. So it's 21 lessons and what I have inside my bin is flashcards that I'll be using, or not flashcards, I'm sorry. Um, what I have inside my bin is posters that I got through Calico Spanish for free from their website. And I went ahead and printed these out on cardstock. So this is what I'm gonna be using for posters as references as we do our lessons. I also have from Calico Spanish, some of their flashcards. These are um, something that I have to cut out and fold and glue. I just haven't had a chance to do that. Um, but yeah, these are all like a bunch of little flashcards. So I have those in here. I'll probably just cut them out and assemble them as I need them. So for now, I, ha I just haven't done that yet. The other thing I have is the actual pages or the printable pages for the Spanish curriculum. And I have it set out already lesson by lesson and they're paper clips. So for lesson one, I already have all the worksheets set aside. Lesson two, all the way through to lesson 21. And as we do our lessons, all I really have to do is grab the little um, paper clipped papers and throw this inside their work boxes. So like that, when we do the lesson, all the paperwork or all the worksheets that they're gonna be working on are gonna be inside of their work boxes. So that's how I have my Spanish set up. So in the next one down here is a Science Fusion. And for Science Fusion, I don't have the actual teacher manual for the Science Fusion, but it's pretty simple. I mean, it's um, the curriculum that I'm using. Um, it's, a work, it's a workbook textbook style. So all I really did was I ended up finding a homeschool science fusion pacing guide. So I went ahead and printed it out. And so this is what I have in here. I went ahead and bound it and um, it just kind of go, it just kind of, it's just more or less an overview of the lessons, what pages they're on when it comes to the kids' textbooks and so forth. So that's what I have in here. I also ended up finding a Spanish version of that book. 
So it's probably gonna be something that I incorporate with their science, but also with their Spanish. Um, just because some of the lessons, like for instance, I know in our Spanish curriculum, we're gonna be talking about our five senses at some point. And the first lesson in science is um, the five senses. So I'll definitely be using this um, in correlation with the Spanish curriculum and their science. So the other thing that I have in here is a little file folder with the pages for their interactive notebook. And I already have them paper clipped by unit. So unit one, unit two, um, unit three, and so forth. So same thing, as we do our lessons, I'll go ahead and pull this aside, make copies of whatever I need to make copies of, because I only have, right now, I only have copies for one child. So I would just have to make copies for um, the second child, and then go ahead and stick this inside of their science work boxes. So everything's already just kind of set up for me. So that's what I have inside my science bin. And then inside of the social studies one, this is my Scott Forsman social studies. So I have my extra workbook just so I can have a copy of the workbook. I can see what pages they're gonna have to work on. Um, like that I have a visual aid as to what they're doing or what they have in front of them so I know what they're working on. So this is um, one of the things that I have in here along with the actual textbook. And the textbook, I decided to keep it inside my work box only because I'm gonna be the one reading the lessons to them. So as we go through the lessons, I'm gonna be reading these out loud to them, asking them whatever questions I have to ask them, and then obviously their workbook is inside their work boxes. The other thing I have in here, um, just as an extra resource, as we go through the lessons, I can always find pages out of this book, and this is the Teacher Created Resources Full Color Literacy Activities for Social Studies book, and this is a grade one through two, and it just has great games, um, little posters, um, it also has um, a few little lesson guides for certain activities that you can do. So this is another thing that I have in there along with my social studies interactive book pages as well. And these two, I have them already um, set aside by units. Um, so same thing, as we go along, all I have to do is make the second copy for the other child and stick it inside their work boxes. So everything's pretty much already set out. Um, so this is what I have inside my social studies. So the very last one is my geography one. For geography, we're actually going to be using the, um, it is the Evan Moore Beginning Geography curriculum. And I already have copies of these books for the boys inside their work boxes. This is just the um, original copy that I have of the book. So I'll be using it again for myself, just as a guide, um, to see what they're working on or the lessons that they, were ha they have to work on for that day. Um, so this is what I have inside my geography work, work box, along with the uh, answer keys that I pulled out of the book. And we're also in conjunction with the Beginning Geography by Evan Moore. I'm also going to be, we're also going to be doing one state a week. So we're also going to be going alphabetically. So what I'm going to be using is this Greetings from the 50 States book from Scholastic. And just almost as a read aloud during geography, we're going to go ahead and go through the 50 states. And I'm just going to read them. their little fun facts about the state. Um, I also found these super cute, videos on YouTube by National Geographic Kids and it's the state birds, the national state birds and they rap and they sing about the state. And uh, I believe from when I was doing it before, I believe they have all 50 states. And um, it's just a really cute little educational um, song videos that they have on YouTube. So we're gonna be using this and the YouTube videos and along with any other fun fact type of websites that I can find on the 50 states. I also created for the kids a workbook and I found a bunch of free printables for each state and I just made them a pretty big workbook. So as I read from this book or we watch the video through YouTube, whatever it is that we do, they have coloring pages that they get to color the states. Um, so that's what I have going on when it comes to geography. I also have, these actually go inside their work boxes, I just haven't put them in. 
So these are a book that I got from the Target Dollar Spot. And I bought these last year. I'm sure they have them again. Um, they were already working from these last year. So I'm going to try to see if I can find new ones for them. Um, and this is why I haven't put them inside their work boxes. Because my goal is to hopefully find um, new ones for them. So anyway, so this is what I have in here. The other thing that I have in here, as we complete each state, I have these little beautiful vintage postcards that I found through education.com. So as we finish each state, I'm going to cut this out, color it, and then we're going to actually make a banner in our classroom with each state. So as we finish the states, um, we hang one of these up. So I feel like that's going to be a, just a really cute way to show that we completed that state for that week. So that's the other thing that I have in here. So this is what I have when it comes to my little mommy's workbox system. And so that's it guys. So let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm gonna try to, um, any of the printables that I have, I'm gonna go ahead and try to add them to the description box so you guys can take a look at some of the stuff that I'm using. Also, if you guys have questions or comments on anything, please feel free. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks.